All right, so today I will be showing you guys how to build a solar panel stand. But more importantly, the reason you're on this video is to show you guys how to build families in Revit. It's a really cool feature and it will help you guys, you know, build anything that's not in the preloaded families already. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So here I am at the opening page of Revit. We're gonna go ahead to the families, we're gonna click new. We're going to select a certain template, and that is metric generic model. And this is just an easy one to work with when you're getting started. So in a couple of seconds here, the page will show up. So yes, yeah, so we have a couple of views across the top. We can also get two different ones here by just clicking on them. Yeah, so let's get started. Let's build on the left plane here. So as you guys just saw, there was what we were building, and it's just a solar panel stand. To add an additional 30 degrees to have uh, the solar panels on a on a roof that's sloped at 10 degrees at a more optimal angle at about 40 degrees. So I'm going to get started. I have a hand sketch in front of me that just helps with the designing process. If you guys are going to design something else, I'd recommend you guys do the same thing. Sketch it out so you can see as you're going along. So let's get started. We're going to be using reference planes, and these are a super efficient way to model 3D things using the Revit, and especially here when building a family. So to do that, type in the hotkeys RP type in the, oh, sorry, RP, and this will spawn a little crosshair. And just let's get started. So we're gonna build the frame first. So there's one, there's another, there's another, and spacing doesn't matter because we're going to adjust that in a second. So this is the bottom of the, of the frame. So here, this will be captured. There was a gap, if you guys can remember, right there. So, so there'd be like frame, 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 a little bit of a gap. There's another gap here the top of the, um, the structure is here. So we're gonna move on to dimensioning now. And that this is how we're gonna parameterize certain dimensions to be the same. This is gonna make this super efficient. So let's go ahead and type in the hotkeys dimension, which is DEI. You can see that the little dimensioning tool shows up. We'll just dimension everything that we're going to adjust the distance or the height of. So these two things here are, the are part of the frame. So we'll dimension those because they're going to be the same. We'll lock them as well. This is a gap here, so we will not do these two. We'll do the vertical ones as well because this is part of the frame. Once again, we'll do the vertical ones right here, part of the frame. This is going to be the height of the inner triangle. So we'll do this one. And then this is going to be a gap in the lower frame. All right. Oh, one more, sorry, we have the width. So now we've got everything uh, dimension. We'll click escape twice. And this will exit us out of, the out of the dimensioning tool. Now we can go ahead and select everything we want to have the same parameters for. So by going select and then control, select all the other ones of interest. So here we're going to be doing the frame. Go up to label. We're going to hit this little page with the flash in the top right. We'll name this frame thickness, and then we'll throw in a SD for side and a capital V for view. All right, so now these are all the same thickness right there. So now we can go ahead and do the other distances as well. So here, we're going to parameterize this one as well. We're going to select it, same thing, go to the corner. This will be called the width, pardon my spelling, width, and we'll go SD space V for side view. We'll go ahead and do this one. This is the lower gap. We'll name it that as well. So we'll call lower, oh, pardon me, lower frame gap. And then we'll throw in an SD, capital V for side view once again. And then finally, this is our last one for this page, it looks like. Go ahead, same thing, parameterize. We'll label this one um, inner triangle. Height. And, and that'll be the inner triangle height for everything. So we can we don't need to throw in the SD for that. Alrighty. Looks like we have the references down. We'll go to the top left corner here. It says family types. We will click that. And so now we have all of these parameters we just designed, and we can add our, our own values to them. So for the thickness, it's going to be 50. For the inner triangle height, it's going to be 990. For the lower frame gap, it's going to be 100. Then for the width, it's going to be 18, 14.7.
There you go. So now you can see everything snapped into place here. And this is this is the right uh, sizing. So what we're missing here, because this is a side view, is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So go ahead and hit the hotkeys RP once again, and we'll get the reference plane. We'll cut across. There you go. And then we'll go and we'll click once again the outer portion there. And we'll come and we'll use the, the Revit's built-in parallel tool. So two purple lines, two purple pink lines show up. Go ahead and click that. And now we have a um, one more part of the frame here. So we can go ahead and escape that. So this is the side. You can kind of see there'll be a frame here, here, here. There'll be a gap here and a gap here. Let's move over to a different view using the top uh, view switching options here at the top to the reference view. Now let's do the same thing, but we're going to be creating a different view now. So once again, reference planes, super handy. We'll go and place this here. So this would be one part of the frame. Let's go ahead and do another one. There you go. And let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dimension these once again. So hotkeys DI, we'll click this one. We'll lock it as well. Click this one, we'll lock it as well. Nice. So now let's control click the other one. They are both selected back up to label and we will parameterize these ones as well. We'll call this frame thickness. And then we'll just throw in a top view as well, just so we know. All right, so now, <clears throat> oh, don't wanna forget about this dimension, the overall length of this um, figure from the top view, there we go. And once again, we will just um, double escape, go back and select it, parameterize this, and we'll call this length. And eh, why not top, top view? Wonderful, let's go back up here and fill in the values. So the top part of the frame will be the same thickness at 50. The length is going to be 1650. And then the, yep, everything else is filled out from before. Wonderful. All right, so basically we have the planes that are gonna bound our shape. Let's go back to the, the left view and let's start to use a new tool called create in the top left corner, extrusion. And this is gonna make, this can turn this 2D planes into 3D. So we're going to use the line tool for this, and we're just going to bound everything that's going to contain material. So this is really going to show you guys exactly what I was doing, because it could be somewhat trivial before, because you can't actually see exactly um, what I was building. Oh, looks like something didn't snap correctly. So this control Z and go back one. Let's go one more back, just to assure that we are on the right planes. Nice. There you go. All right, so the shape has come to life. So now just hit finish at the top. And we're going to go to different view. And we'll always do this just to make sure that it's going the right depth. So you can see it was a little bit short. So now we're going to go to there. And we'll lock this one here. We'll lock this one here. Wonderful. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and um, go to the 3D view. Okay, we can't see anything yet, but I can assure you that it is there. There you go. Just hit that little button there and it'll bring you right to it. Nice, so we actually have our, uh, our main shape now. We just have to use a new tool and that's gonna be the void forms tool, void X, uh, what was that, void, Create, control Z, we'll go void extrusion, wonderful. So let's start by going to the back view. Let's use the rectangular tool and we're just gonna be cutting material out now so that it's, um, we just save material. So now we're gonna go, okay, let's go to a different view. Let's try the left to make sure, yeah, once again, it's a little bit short. So we'll cut across. And then we'll click somewhere else and that's what initiates the cut. So let's go to the 3D view, see how it looks. Wonderful. We have the cut took place. Let's go back to the, let's go to the reference level. So looking top down on it, let's do a cut through the top and eliminate some material that's not needed there. Let's go to create void forms, void extrusion. 
once again, rectangular tool from this corner to this corner. And then we will check out a different view. Okay, looks good. Let's hit okay. So now we'll we'll go. Oh, we already cut through that, but it doesn't hurt to do it again. There you go. Oh, okay. So it in fact did not like that. I believe it's because we had the cut going too high when there was no material to cut through there. So we'll lower it there. Once it, yeah, there it was. So you have to only cut through material. You can't cut through empty space. All right, so let's look at the 3D model. What do we have left? So we have this cut, this cut, this cut, this cut, this cut. So we just have two slits here and here. So let's go ahead. Once again, let's go to the front view this time. Really try to utilize your views for the best angles to cut through or best sides to cut through. Once again, create void forms, void extrusion. We'll use the box tool. We can zoom in here. We have the existing reference points that are super helpful. Let's go to finish, let's reference a different view and make sure this thing goes all the way through. There you go, and it looks like it does. All right, guys, I think that is it for now. There you go. So this is a complete solar panel stand that I'll be using in my own project at the University of Victoria. Well, I'll have one going across here, one going across there. And so, um, yeah, so really I showed you guys how to build a solar panel stand, but I hope you guys can um, apply the skills I showed to build really anything in Revit that's not existent in the, the, uh, the preset uh, families. So yeah, hopefully you can apply this to any of your guys' projects and I hope it helped out. Hope you guys have a great day.